Welcome to The Drunken Bourgeois, episode two. Today's guest, Daniel Kennan, born and raised in Jacksonville, Florida, easily one of the most quick-witted, perceptive, intellectual people that I have came across, and you're going to get a million different nuggets of useful information to use in your everyday life, anything from planning to, su to business to success, you name it, we go over it all. Enjoy. The stuff that I take is so great. Here you go. Bacopa, cat's claw, oat straw, trapezia serrata. Help you realize your limitless potential. Limitless potential for complete list of ingredients. Please see below. Yeah. Joe Rogan said so. Alpha brand. Alpha brand. Yes. Yeah. That, that's, a, that's a nice uh, plug. Maybe they'll pick you up. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, I had a very... Uh, long run today so I'm a little tired but here's my plug uh, bang uh, fuel your destiny that's good <laughs> strawberry glass it's a uh, very patriotic too so everybody uh, the Daniel Cannon here he is in the flesh it happened you know I, I tell you what I'm really happy about is this um, some things fell through uh, originally for you you called me at 12 I got on a quick flight uh, flew in from Riverside, and now we're here three hours later, and it's awesome. This yeah, is great. I yeah. love this setup. Did, I'm glad to have me. Did you fly uh, first class or uh, no? No, no. I, I took like Allegiant. <laughs> okay, and, uh, you got to try to uh, fly Emirates as well. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, nice little uh, point three miles on the street. That's yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. Got to be here. All right, so I like the beer, Daniel. Like yeah, beer. no shade November. I think it's important. Um, you know, one, what is no shade November all about? People have been know. Uh, no, tell them. I, I really, I was going to ask you, actually. Yeah. Mo November, is, that, is it just yeah. all-inclusive? Let's, um, let's look it up. Let's, let's make sure we get this right. Um, what's the real story about the November movement? Um, prostate cancer, testicular cancer, all those type of things in terms of men, but now women are participating and not shaving their armpits or uh, legs. So, oh, that's right. So, Gary has the beard, and I just figured, if I had to come onto this podcast, I have to have the same energy. So... I'm, I'm glad I got the beard going on. I usually don't have a beard. It's only once a month, so my wife my <laughs> wife can, uh, she can like it. Right, babe? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Daniel, uh, I guess tell everybody how we know each other. Yeah, uh, so fortunately, I had the opportunity to work with Gary. Um, it's almost been six years, man. Is that crazy? I was thinking about that today. Uh, six years, and uh, working at Bailey's Health and Fitness, a uh, local gym here in Jacksonville, Florida. And uh, we started off on the West Side location. You were there. I don't know how how long have you been there. A little more, a little bit more, a couple longer years than I was. And uh, had the opportunity to work with you, and it's always fun. It's always a nice relationship to work with people in a, a human enterprise to talk to people, learn about their background, and really hang out. You know. Um, Next thing you know, you moved away, went to do bigger and better things, a better location. Um, Gary's a very valuable asset within this organization. He is someone who, uh, who, who does his job really well, and they took him away from me. I, was, I, I ran one of these locations, and I was kind of sad. It's hard to replace someone like Gary. But, but, uh, like gravity, yeah, I just, you know, got that slingshot around the moon, and next thing you know, we ended up at the same location again, which I'm super fortunate. Gary works with, me, works with me in a pretty large capacity, but the great part is this. Um, it's super important to be around people that work with you, I think, in a, in a, in a good environment. A, a fun, not only a fun environment, but an environment that challenges you, makes you uh, be, you know, be a creative problem solver, be intellectually curious, something that you and I, I think both have, especially yourself. I mean, we're here on the podcast. I think it's amazing to be able to do something like that. I've always wanted to do it. I never took the leap. Yeah. You did. I'm here. Thanks be, because of Gary. Um, but we get opportunity to sit down, talk, um, talk about just our worldviews, different types of topics, the people that we engage with and interact with, and it, it really is a wonderful time. So now I get to work with you again um, at a different location, and um, you know we can talk talk about a lot of different stuff, and hopefully we can just kind of move that conversation here. All the great stuff we talk about all the time at work. Hey, yes, we do work, but you know, in between. We also have a, I guess, a famous corner that we just talk to people about everything and anything. Yeah, people enjoy that. They enjoy the the good discourse and the creative thought that goes into, uh, you know, the, our worldviews that we have. So, yeah, um, 
That's, is there any more you want me to share with that regard? No, that's good. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I appreciate your uh, your energy. At yeah, the I, I appreciate it. It is well received, uh, especially here on this show. So we're going to see where it takes us. Uh, all right, so that's how we know each other. Uh, I guess, what's your story, Daniel? Yeah, uh, well, uh, born and raised in Jacksonville, Florida. Duval, hashtag. And um, super, I love our city, man. And I really do. Yeah. It, I, I find it so interesting when I talk to people, they want to get out of Jacksonville, and I, I kind of, you know, I scratch my head, I wonder why. Fortunately, I've been able to travel so many different parts of the world um, outside of the America and also within America, and I tend to love Jacksonville based off everywhere I've been. We have so many great things here, including a beach, let's start with that, yeah. you know, how many people don't even have an ocean? Yeah. Um, we got our beautiful river. You know, you and I live here in um, Avondale Riverside area at the beautiful St. John's River right on the street. Mm -hmm. It's an artsy part of town. Um, so many great restaurants and local things. Um, I enjoy it, and especially because you have such a um, so many different people from different parts of uh, America, the world. Um, that how inclusive it is with cultures and backgrounds and different sides of town. Everyone would agree that. You have your north side, you have your south side, you have your west side, you have your beaches people, and they're all inherently different, and you know who they are, and, and really what type of person that is. But um, Jacksonville, in my opinion, is a great place um, to raise a family, great place for um, uh, living wages and expenses and what you're trying to look, especially if you're an entrepreneur, um, and especially in real estate, this is a great market. Um, it's up and coming, it's growing, this is true. It's up and coming, it's growing, and you have a lot of movers and shakers that are moving here, and you know, Jack's Business uh, Journal and the Jack's Chamber, they've talked about Jacksonville being the number one largest growing city, the fastest growing city um, in the U.S. A lot of young people are moving here, so um, I'm, glad, I'm glad to be here. What do you think? I think, I think it's, there's only a million people here, and we have this metropolitan background, um, but we're still a very small town, Phil, at the same time, so there's a lot of opportunity, yeah. there's a lot of full ceiling, but um, I'm from Jacksonville. I'm, I plan on staying in Jacksonville. Um, you know, Where are you born? Where was it born specifically? Yeah. Yes. St. Vincent's. Right oh, really? Right here. Oh, there it is. Which is which is great. Dr. Chaffin, he's the goat. <laughs> <laughs> like birthed like half my family. Um, anyhow. But uh yeah, Jacksonville's awesome. So I found staying here probably for the long run and um, there's a lot of opportunities here that you know so many people want to take advantage of. But ultimately, um, it's a great place. My uh, mom was born in West Africa, Morocco, my dad was born in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, they have an awesome story how they met and but they ended up being here and mm -hmm. been here for 32 years. If you could live anywhere uh, in the world, where would it be? Or where is your, I guess, final destination? Ah, I love Florida. I'd probably have to say that, you know, down south somewhere, South Florida, SoFlo. I think that's a nice place. I like the energy down there, the culture. Okay. Yeah. Not, nowhere in particular. I like Brickell. I like, I like, you know, North Miami up in Cherry, Fort Lauderdale. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so. I love Florida. Yeah. Go Gators, by the way. I have, sorry. Did, did, did you graduate there or something? I, I went, I got my graduate uh, from UF. Got my master's there, so. Congrats. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that, you know. Um, so what are you going to do with that? What, let's, let's dive into that. Yeah, sure. You just graduated how long ago? Literally, um, I graduated just this past couple months ago, and it's crazy because <laughs> when I graduate now in the COVID era, they literally say congratulations on YouTube and that's how you, you walk across the, uh, you know, I guess the stage virtually. 2020. 2020. <laughs> it's unfortunate. But I know. Yes. It's okay. So, so the goal with that is this, you know, I talked about a little bit, I, I, I love talking to you specifically. You're, um, you're intellectually curious. You have a very broad uh, scope in terms of your abilities to think and understand um, others at you know, a lot of different ways. And I've always said that leaders are learners. The moment you stop learning is the moment you stop leading. And so for me, you know, I was like, my, my I guess my school history is, is kind of checkered. And a lot of people maybe have a similar background or maybe they don't, but um, my family didn't go to school. Um, my, 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 a lot of my friends that I know family didn't go to school. Mm -hmm. And there, a lot of people are self-made that I know. And you know that's that's changing a little bit. It not it's not always been like that. Now it seems like a requirement, which is not true at all. Mm -hmm. um, you know, academia and acad being in the academic world is important, 
but um, I think it's really what you're going to do with the ability and the, the uh, do you, are you equipped uh, with skills and do you have the motivation, do you have the, um, the zeal, the tenacity, go and do something, are you focused, do you have a goal? And um, one of my goals, though, was to graduate from UF just because it's such a great school, it's a great program. And um, why, why specifically? Yeah. Well, they're, they're the number seven school in the um, United States, uh, public public university. Uh, they're the number one school in the United the state, uh, state of Florida. And um, I am a Florida Gator, too. My dad always loved the Gators, and I bleed orange and blue. but. They academically, they're, they're renowned with their business school, Warrington College of Business. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to see what, what could really, what it's all about. And I'll tell you something funny, I didn't really plan on talking about this, but I, I went there to one of their MBA sessions. And when I was there during the weekend, I had the CTO. Like a class you talk about? Or? Yeah, it's like a boot camp kind of a class thing. I had the okay. CTO of Silver Airways, and I think the CFO of FedEx was there. And I'm like, why in the world am I in the same room with people like this? And ultimately, I said, I don't know whatever it takes. I want to be in this room. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to continue to have my learning skills, yeah. to be sharpened, get better, and hopefully take that to the next level. So had a wonderful journey with Florida. was able to learn so many different um, pragmatic, applicable skills that I could use in the real world. And now I'm in the space where it's time to switch gears and maybe move in a different venture, a new opportunity, and actually put those skills to use especially from my background, you know, being here in Florida, my background's been sales um, okay. all my life. Um, and it's professional selling and it's business to business, entrepreneurial selling, enterprise selling. And now we're in a space where you really have to have an entrepreneurial mindset to be successful in this COVID proof era. Like what can you do mm -hmm. to overcome those obstacles? Yeah. Now we, you've talked about on your, um, podcast, Gary, a lot of different things that you're doing with the house hacks and um, real estate investment and what that looks like for you. So, you know, now what can you do with the background, or excuse me, what can you do now in terms of COVID and Corona to continue to be successful in lieu of everything that's happening? So that's kind of the goal for me and that's what I want to accomplish. Yeah. We're going to take a, a little commercial break here. All right. We're back. All right. So. I forgot where we earlier left, left off. What can you do during this time? This is like us at work. Yeah. Uh, our train of thought. It gets lost after uh, we ring up members and stuff like that. Yeah. It's we have to recapture everything. You see, this is what I said. I think you would be better at that. But it's like, what, what were you saying? Yeah. Um, what can you do during this time amidst a pandemic mm -hmm. to become corona proof, is what I like to call it. Yeah. Right? Um, with. Uh, the skill sets that so many people that are probably tuning in, learning new opportunities, learning new skill sets, equipping themselves with um, ideas and things that you're sharing with everyone yeah. that you have done because you know you, you're a learner. You like to be a lifelong learner. That's in, that's super important. Yeah. And how can that? How can you leverage yourself against what's happening in our in our current environment right now? So it's kind of taken up to the next the next notch. And um, what is you know how can you uh, whether it's selling, whether it's communicating properly, whether it's listening a better way, whether it's being act, an active listener, mm -hmm. whether that's being someone who wants to go and shift and pivot from what you're doing right now. To have, yeah. Let's be honest, why do many people want to go and be entrepreneurial? Maybe you want to go change the world. Maybe mm -hmm. you want to go save, save some, um, you know, save the world, give the world peace. Ultimately, a lot of people want to be successful. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, I think what, you would agree with that, wouldn't you? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, um, what does that look like? I don't know. What does it look like for you? Well, so I think everybody, everybody's goals are different. Everybody's path to success is different, whether that's education, mm -hmm. um, whether that's, um, you know, as far as COVID and everything like that, I think it's all like a math, math equation, you mm -hmm. know, um, A plus B equals C find out what works. If it's not working, obviously it needs to be changed. Right. And then cater that to your actual, you know, subject matter. But yeah, so me, obviously I'm all about real estate. Mm -hmm. All right. You, do you want to be in real estate? Well, I love the concept. I love the concept. My mom always told me, she goes, Daniel, if you look at life, it's kind of like Monopoly. How do you become successful in Monopoly? It's these assets, these little plastic houses on the board, right? 
And yeah. the more you have, the better off you are. And I've been following that for quite some time in terms of a strategy. And it's so interesting how different people matriculate, I guess you could say, in zig and zag through life, you know, and the school thing is a wonderful thing. I love it. It's cool to say you have your master's, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be successful with that. Now, what, now what's the next step? What are you going to do? And um, fortunately, I've been uh, around enough people like my mom and my dad and my, uh, my in-laws um, who are wonderful and people like yourself where you get motivated. I've always said that you want to get around, um, you're, you're the average of five people who hang around the most. That's right, everyone. Five. <laughs> So I just keep thinking that like you go into a business school or whatever, uh, mm -hmm. your MBA and you were attracted to those people there and you wanted to be around them because ultimately you know that there's some correlation with success and that basically if you were to surround yourself with them, yeah, you are going to be somewhere up there as far as successful as long as you hang around those types of people. It, and, it, and I think it's true because you learn so many skills along the yeah. way and you said a good word, you said success. If, if you were to ask, you know, the audience right now, everyone at home, hey, who wants to be successful? Raise your hand. You know, I think everyone inside is going, I want to be successful, right? Me, yeah, I do. Well, here, here's a good concept to understand. Success is the management of opportunities, right? So if I say it again, success, what does success mean? Success is the management of opportunities. What's an opportunity look like? Mm -hmm. Opportunities are different for everyone yeah. and every... You know, and here's the problem with an opportunity that many people don't realize. Opportunities come and go every single day. A lot of times, I, I really liken an opportunity just like a problem. Yeah, problems come and go every single day. So if you really think about it, the only difference is between an opportunity and a problem is you can identify a problem. Mm -hmm. If I were to slap you in the face, we got a problem, right? But there's yeah, an opportunity. We're have a podcast. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> The bang, the bang. I don't. Oh, you it's over here. There it is. Okay, good. Um, the caffeine. I love caffeine. But anyways, uh, alpha I brain. wish. Yeah, alpha brain. Um, the point. The point is, we might have to cut that part out. <laughs> the point of I'm trying to get to is an opportunity and problem are the same thing. The differentiator between the two is you can see a problem. You probably can't see an opportunity. Mm -hmm. So, what can you do to see an opportunity? What does that look like? Well, back to learn, uh, leaders or learners. Getting yourself in position, surrounding yourself with people that matter, mm -hmm. talking to people that are going to elevate you, motivate you, encourage you, guide you. They're going to be objective to your goals that you want to set and give you not critical, not critical, uh, constructive criticism, but just critical feedback because yeah. they care about you. They truly want you to be successful. Um, so if you want to be equipped with how to understand what an opportunity looks like, you have to be able to, number one, sense it. You have to be able to sift through it, sort it, and then hopefully then you can seize that opportunity. So whether that opportunity is house hacking or looking at a house on an MLS that's been sitting there for quite some time and no one else has seen the low hanging fruit, mm -hmm. but you did. Yeah. Why? You've been equipped with some abilities to go, there's an opportunity here. I can see it, sense it, sort it, sift through it, seize it. Now you're moving to a space to have over, you know, increase your overall revenue, have multiple revenue um, income streams for you and your family. Yeah. To live in a space where you're hopefully debt free, and you're moving to a space where you're like, hey, life is great. I love it. I get to talk to people, be impressionable, make some time for a podcast, get on YouTube. That's that's really yeah. what you want to be able to do, right? Okay. Oh, yeah. So I think those things are, are critical, um, and those opportunities they look different for everyone. Again, um, my mom and dad they they didn't have an opportunity to go to college, but they have been successful. Why? They've been equipped with the ability to sift, seize, sort, and sense, mm -hmm. and they've taken that with me and my two younger sisters and just wind us up and let us go into the right direction, and and now. I'm inherently responsible. What am I going to do with that, right? You feel so, pressure? I think I feel. I feel like it's. Uh, I think yeah, actually, and I think it's a good thing. I think we should feel pressure. If I were to be really silly here, what you know? What do they say? Pressure makes diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and but in all in all seriousness, I think it's okay to have high expectations. Mm -hmm. You know, you should always want to continue to move the bar and set the bar and set the tone for yourself in life. Um, because ultimately, if you don't, hey, you know, let's pause, let's, let's back up. I, I'll give you a good example I talk about all the time. Um, you've heard Gary, you know, and so many people have heard me probably say this, so if you've heard this before, 
you know, you're going to have to hear it again. In life, you have to make sure that you set goals, okay? Um, you know, we were talking before we started uh, the podcast YouTube channel here, um, being here, and you're like, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm working on this right now, on this subject, and I wrote this down, I'm kind of thinking about talking about this. You're making goals for yourself, right? Yeah. Whether you inherently thought about that, you're cognitively thought about that, it's another question, but you're, you're literally made yourself goals. So if you are just going through life and you're just coasting, you're not setting expectations for yourself, if you're not setting any type of goals for yourself, if you're not putting any type of pressure on yourself, mm -hmm. you're, you're coasting. You're going downhill. Complacent. Yeah, you get complacent. You get mediocre. Yeah. You get lukewarm. And when you coast, if you if you think about a bicycle, right? And if you're riding, how can a bike I'm coast? Yeah. iPhone 12 Pro Max, <laughs> thanks Apple. How, the bike, to go downhill, mm -hmm. the bike has to go downhill, right? You yeah. can't only coast downhill. Mm -hmm. So that's a problem. If you don't have goals, then you're going downhill. If you're coasting in life, then you're going downhill. So to set some goals for you, is that easy? No. Is it, could it be uncomfortable? Well, yeah. The next thing you know, you're sitting in front of a microphone and you're talking into a microphone in front of potentially thousands of people. Yeah. But there's great opportunity there when you get uncomfortable, I think. There's a, yeah, yeah, there's a quote, to be successful is to uh, put yourself in uncomfortable situations. That There's some exact quote, but that's exactly what it is because you're not pushing yourself. Jamie, pull that up. Yeah, pull it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. I, that's uh, a reference. <laughs> <laughs> I think... Um, Success for everybody comes at different points in their life, mm -hmm. and, and I don't think you should judge somebody ever if they're in a different stage of their life, you know, mm -hmm. because their opportunity hasn't come yet, you know, sure. or they haven't realized that, hey, there's opportunities right in front of me, you know, so I think it's funny that you brought that up, but I just want to emphasize that, that I think it's great. I think you just nailed something on the head, too, that, you know, so many times people think success is monetary things, mm -hmm. and that's great and all. But that's also not entirely true at either. Success is being comfortable where you're at and being the, the greatest person you can possibly be. And that's by maybe having you know a good family or, or um, having being a good husband to your wife or being a good leader for your friends and setting, again, setting just good expectations. And um, so it's not about, yeah, man, I want to go get a car. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I want to go do this and buy a house this big. It's not necessarily the goals you want to have. I think you'll you'll end up being. It could be. It could be. It could be the other on the other side of that. How do I make enough, let's say, passive income yeah. to be able to afford that stuff? Sure. And it becomes a, a driving factor there. Sure. A sure. Goal, so it's again, it's all relative yeah. to who it is. Yeah. And so it's like, oh well, you just want to, you know, be comfortable in life. Well, that's okay. Yeah. Everyone has a different goal. But here's the point. You want to make sure you're still moving the needle for yourself, mm -hmm. right? You yeah. want to make sure you're still grinding forward. Um, and, and growing, I think, is, is critical. Um, there's a story I heard, and um, if you don't mind me sharing with it, I'm actually going to use this, my, refer to my Mac here. <laughs> Gary loves when I talk about Apple products. He so can't much. stand it. But anyways, that's why I look and laugh and grimace at the camera. But um, I read an article about a little uh, girl in India named Surya, and she was not growing up. Okay. The article said, although she was five years old, she only weighed 19 pounds. Now that's a very common problem where this little girl came from. Okay. She was malnourished. Um, in fact, 46% of the children in her area were malnourished, nearly half, and then 38% um, were permanently stunted in their growth. Here's what I'm getting to when I tell the story. Here's what the tagline said. It said, poverty is preventing a nation from growing up. Here's what it made me think of. Growing up's a part of life, mm -hmm. right? Um, if you don't grow up, that's a tragedy. And you need to make sure, we need to make sure that we grow up in every facet of life, whether it's mental growth, uh, physical growth, relational growth, um, vocational growth, financial growth. If we do not do that, that's a tragedy. And again, so how do you grow? Kind of talked about you know that. You have to, you have to set goals for yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to say, hey, here's what I want to achieve. Here's what I want to do. And when you do that, I think that is really what helps you be successful. I always use that story when I go and talk to people. I do go do lunch and learns because it's kind of like, what? This is kind of sad. You know, you're mm -hmm. talking about this. Yeah. And poverty is putting a nation growing up. But here's the thing. We have to grow up. All living things are meant to grow. Think about it. And we don't grow. That really is a tragedy. So the challenge today for a lot of young people 
who want to move into, you know, uh, any entrepreneurial uh, background or entrepreneurial uh, venture opportunity or, you know, someone who wants to work into real estate, which I mean, I'm working on that right now just because I want to do some things in that regard. You have to put yourself in a position that you will get uncomfortable, but it does allow you and requires you to grow. Mm -hmm. And um, there's some things I just think about that. So, yeah. Totally agree. Yeah. Love it all. Yeah, man. Thanks. (laughs) You know, and when talking about your goals, you know, I guess uh, we're talking about pressure on yourself earlier. Mm -hmm. There is a MacBook here in front of us because Daniel likes to plan for everything and always be prepared so that he is successful. So, yeah. you know, it's, they think about that. I think it's a, it's a character trait that is really good to have. So yeah. I, I say it to my wife all the time. I like to plan. I like to have multiple outfits whenever we go out because you never know what happens. So I always, I like to bring a backpack for the most part everywhere yeah. I go. So I love that you brought up a laptop here because you want to succeed. You want yes. to blow this podcast out <laughs> the water. I think it's great. You overachiever, you. That's right. You heard that first year from Gary, Janica, the one and only the real kid. Um, but yeah, you, you know, that's the thing, you know, just having those, setting those expectations for myself. And I do like things to make sure that they are successful. And mm-hmm. I like to beat the people around me that are successful because ultimately that, that fuels my fire. And um, me too. I enjoy yeah. that. Me too. That's yeah. why I like working with you because... Yeah. You're always, we're pinging back and forth, you know, obviously you see me doing stuff and then I see you doing stuff sure. and it creates that, you know, environment to be successful. Yeah. So I think if everyone that's listening out here, get around people that make you better, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, ultimately there's so many people that we encounter and it's like, after they leave, we they get to talking to them like, man, what an interesting person. I want to know more about that individual, yeah. Yeah. you know, be someone who who impacts other people's lives because I think that's a great part of it mm-hmm. is you are there's some intrinsic value there there's some some heavy currency and that's having a conversation that's being relational that's um, um really maybe not making an economic transaction that's what sales is yeah. but making this um transaction in terms of learning about other people and helps you grow helps challenge you to become a better individual um you know with my sales background I think you know you would learn your sales background I've been, I've been doing sales all my life, you know, I, um, I, I got 2010, I got my foot in the door because my mom had a good reputation uh, of, because of her so reputation. There was an opportunity there and you took advantage of that opportunity there. Yeah, there was. And it was in telecommunications, so they call it telecom. Mm-hmm. And basically, um, I don't want to get into all the details unless you want me to, but what that looks like is you're dealing with large enterprise organizations in connecting their business across the United States. Yeah. So for instance, um, you know, GNC. That was one of our clients, every single location. They're all connected by the same um, internet. They're all connected by the same voice, data, and everything. And guess what? There's one bill for that, too. Not, it's not always true, but, you know, that's stuff people don't think about that. Yeah. So, you know, getting in that position, you, you learn how to uh, overcome objections. You learn how to speak to people. And you learn how to um, be quick, creative real quick. And if you don't, next thing you know, there's pressure on where you're not meeting your number. Yeah. So, um, I was fortunate enough to kind of get, uh, get my teeth kicked in at a young age. <laughs> uh, I, I think telecom is, is fascinating because, uh, it reminds me of, uh, Snowden, the movie, yeah. you know, how like this guy is just unplugging and plugging in little cables to connect to different servers Crazy. across the world. It's, it's a whole different world that I'm not even, I don't know anything about. No, it's, it's really wild. And, um, the way, you know, voice moves on copper. You know, like, like what? Yeah. What are you even talking about? Like copper lines. So, I mean, literally your voice is just vibrating on this copper line. That's how it transmits back and forth. It's like, what? It's an old school uh, telephone, probably like the two cups in the yeah. chair. Yeah. 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 We call that POTS, P-O-T-S, which stands for poor old telephone system. It's a true thing. Look it up. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, lear- working in that field, though, was wonderful because I understood how to set to run to, how to create activity, how to talk to people, how to communicate, mm-hmm. how to adapt and different types of environments. You especially learn how to have an emotional intelligence, an emotional quotient. And for all the people listening out there, there's this stark difference between EQ and IQ. A lot of people know what IQ is. IQ is intelligence quotient. EQ is emotional quotient. EQ means I have the ability to understand someone else by their facial expression, their nonverbals, the grimace, the smile, the smirk, their temperament, their body language, 
and I'm able to read the room really is what that means mm -hmm. to help you be successful in a, an environment. So if you're in a, on a sales call or you're trying to create an opportunity in front of you for you know a new real estate opportunity and trying to get a new home on, on MLS or trying to sell or buy and you're getting these nonverbals, some people are totally oblivious to mm -hmm. even reading that and understanding what that means. I um, judge everybody. <laughs> <laughs> everybody does to a certain degree, but sure, it, yeah. Yeah, it's helpful. Yeah. yeah, you just got to make sure you're paying attention to everything. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think the facial expressions uh, are you are they closed off? You know, are they are they looking at you? Are they paying attention? Are they engaged? I think those things matter. So because of my sales background, I was able to learn a lot of these things. And you know, now I'm in the space where I teach sales. I, I talk about it. Um, I teach people the fundamentals of what these things look like to help to get them better in life. You yeah. know. Yeah. Um, you know, ultimately, do you find passion in that? Yeah, I think so. I think I like encouraging people to get into a space where they figure out that they're more than capable of doing things that they initially thought they were doing are doing right now. And I, I think, you know, we in our culture, we get lost in the sauce, you know, and what that means is we get we get in the weeds, we get in the woods, mm -hmm. and we're unable to really realize how special we are. You know, I, I tell people all the time, you have a unique thumbprint, voice print, heartbeat. You are so unique in, in an individual and in who you are. You are so capable of doing so many things. Go do it. Yeah. And so the reason why we don't do that in our culture, I, I call this um, comparison is the thief of joy. You know, we get caught in the minutia by always looking at the IG, looking at the gram, looking at Facebook, looking at everyone and go, I want that, I want that, I wish I could do that. And instead of doing the one thing, which I'll talk about here in a second, of focusing on themselves and focusing on their sphere of influence, they're focused on all the wrong things. Yeah. You know, so if you're able to pivot and engage on what you can do a little better and not compare, I think you'll be much better off in life. So. I do enjoy talking to people, coaching and developing, developing them, especially leveraging the sales world. The sales world, sales is a unique word, by the way. I think that's a that's a like a buzzword that can have some negative connotation sometimes. I think that's wrong. Um, yeah, like a car salesman. Yeah, right. Yeah. I think I think I think I think I blame Hollywood for that. I think Hollywood has made it like, hey, if you greet the uncle, you know he's talking like this, and uh, he's like, hey, I want a pink ring. He's like, hey, bud, come over here. Let me tell you how to sell this guy right here. And in fact, to be a, someone who's in sales, you have to be able to be, number one, a creative problem solver. You have to be empathetic to the person mm -hmm. you're talking to. You have to be creative. All these attributes I already talked about earlier, you have to actually have these skill sets. You have to be equipped with these things and understand these uh, concepts to be successful, to overcome objections, to identify the benefit for that consumer. Mm -hmm. And you know, the benefit is what's in it for me. Um, I just had someone call the other day and uh, he was trying to pitch me on the phone. And a lot of times, typically, people are just going to hang up the telephone and go, oh, call, call, click. Yeah. Well, I always enjoy having these conversations with people just to kind of see where they're going to go. Mm -hmm. And the guy said, hey, I knew the market. I want to sell you something. And I think you'd be really interested in it. Really, really interested in it. I said, okay, what is it? <laughs> he wasn't expecting that. Yeah. You know? The guy just wants to have this economic transaction, make a sale. He wasn't ready for that. Think about how many calls he did before you. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I said, well, what is it? He goes, what is it? He asked, he asked the question. He kind of stumbled on his words and mm -hmm. told me. I said, okay, well, what's in it for me? He goes, what's in it for you? I said, yeah, what's the benefit? Mm -hmm. Consumers buy benefits. What's the benefit? And I thought it was, you know, the interaction was interesting. But if you're in a position in, you know, someone goes sales. Why sales? Why should I be in sales? I know we're kind of moving and kind of in this whole entire conversation, it's fun. I enjoy it, but um, why sales? Okay, nothing, absolutely nothing happens without selling anything. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't matter, okay? The accountants will tell you that otherwise, they're like, hey, we count the money. Mm -hmm. That's fine and all, but here's the thing, you're not counting money unless there's a sale, Yeah. right? Yeah. The manufacturer, in the manufacturing departments will say, well, hey, we're the production, we're the assembly line. We, we actually make the product. Well, there's no product unless you make a sale, Yeah. right? And so all that is fine and great and dandy. So so many people, you know, that are, say, hey, well, my sales is crazy. I don't need to be part of sales at all. I don't want to do that at all. Well, without sales, nothing happens in business. 
zero. Yeah. Okay. In an entrepreneurial venture, nothing happens uh, or nothing. Uh, you're not going to be an effective salesperson if you don't have any con customers or yeah. any sales. You have no business. So selling is important, and I think what that a lot of times what that is just being engaging, using your personality mm -hmm. in talking to people, but learning how to talk in a special way. And so I know you've learned that over your time of us working together. We've talked about different techniques and different things oh, to yeah. be successful. Yeah. But um, I wrote this down. It says the skills that you learn to become an effective salesperson are applicable in every part, in every facet in life, whether it's managing personal relationships, interviewing for a job, parenting, parenting of all things, of course, yeah. um, team participation, leadership, um, career progression, um, selling ideas. Because here's ultimately what happens. You sell yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, you're a presentation and how you communicate, how you listen, and so on and so forth. So I think it's an, I think it's important. I, and I wrote last thing. I said it is safe to say that any relationship exists or that needs to exist. Selling skills will be useful. Mm -hmm. So I agree. I yeah. find myself using sales all around, like especially mm -hmm. being a realtor, stuff like that. Like it, it is everywhere. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. And uh, you know, for people <laughs> that are listening and they go, okay, well, this is kind of a real estate investment, you know, entrepreneurial, um, house hack, um, how to do it, fix it up, be out, do it yourself kind of a podcast. Mm -hmm. So why is this important? What we're talking about? Number one, um, understanding the selling process is important. Yeah. Sales have been around for thousands, tens of thousands of years. It doesn't change. It's simply a widget. Mm -hmm. So understanding that that is fundamentally important. Number two, though, back to what we started off with, you can't sell or do anything unless you have a goal. I think having a goal is really what's going to help you be successful in life. Yeah. Um, and I actually, you know what? I didn't think I was going to get to this. Why I said, my goal setting is so critical. There was a study by Dr. Gail Matthews. Um, you can guys can look it up if you want to. But Dr. Gail Matthews, she had a goal orientation study. Mm -hmm. And Basically, she had seven components of it. I'll just tell you three. I think the three um, is really interesting. Um, she had three people. She had thinkers, writers, and sharers. Okay? Um, and this is, again, for a goal orientation study. So what are the thinkers? They're the ones who have goals that are just in their mind. All right? Those are the people that just think about an idea. They think it's pretty cool, but um, they're loosely organized. Right? They, right. Don't, they, don't, they don't move to that next step. Uh, they don't write them down. They don't do anything. Mm -hmm. um, the next person you have, the second person, is the writer. What do they do? They type them out. They write them down. They put them in a journal. They maybe have some goal, you know, you know, Excel spreadsheet that they want to write down and check yeah. off the list, yeah. you know, uh, what, what they want to do. Everybody's different, yeah. Yeah, everyone's different. And the third person, what, what she called the sharer, okay? Mm -hmm. These are the people that not only do they write them down, but they talk to someone and create accountability. Well, she sent these people off as a group of 350 people. She sent them off and brings, brings them back in a year. Remember, you have the thinkers, the writers, and the sharers. Yeah. What she came up with this was the thinkers had a goal attainment of only 43%. So, if we were to really break this down and think about it, 43%, you go, hey, that's not pretty bad. You know, 43% goal attainment it might seem pretty good. Well, in retirement time, when it's time to retire, and you only have 43% saved up, for retirement yeah or when it's time to send your kiddos to college and you've only saved 43 percent of your savings to send them are you going to be successful the 43 percent i don't know could be mm -hmm. it depends the the goal attainment for the writers was 62 percent again these are people that wrote it down why is that important because when you write something down it gives you more clarity yeah. gives you more um opportunity, especially if you put it in a drawer or put it somewhere and you go back, open up the book, like, oh yeah, I forgot I wrote that at the beginning of 2020. Mm -hmm. it's so funny, 2020, this is the year of vision. That's what I told myself. I wrote that down. I said, we have great vision, 2020. We're going to make sure that we go and get what we want to get. And yeah. 2020, I guess, well, Corona happened. Yeah. Um, but the goal attainment was 62% for those. And then lastly, the sharer, the goal attainment <clears throat> for the sharer was 76%. Think about it. The process of writing something down and sharing with you dramatically increases your goal 
Why? Because you have accountability. Yeah. You have someone that says, hey, let's talk about this and how we're going to achieve this, how we're going to have this opportunity, how we're going to get to that space, how we're going to help ourselves be successful. I love your podcast you had here with Sammy because it was wonderful because you guys talked about your goals. You mm -hmm. talked about how you're going to achieve these different types of things. Yeah. And when you are a sharer, you're not only writing the goals down, but you're putting them in front of you to remind you, to keep you accountable, to give you clarity, and to give you commitment mm -hmm. to that goal. Yeah. So... If you want to do anything, and if you're like, well, I need to understand how to talk to people, I need to learn how to, you know, overcome objections, understand what features it is and benefits are, understand what the benefit is, and all these key salesy words to be mm -hmm. successful. Well, first thing you need to do is get a goal. Yeah. And write it down and maybe find someone. We're wrapping this whole thing and put it together piece by piece. Someone, remember, five people that you get around the most. We're really the average of that person. Yeah. So yeah. Share with someone who encourages you. Mm -hmm. So I think those are some of the recipes for success and some of the things that I've done so well so far in my life being here in Jacksonville. I'm in the season and the life. And by the way, I think this is important. She said, Hey, you just finished this. You just finished school. What's the next step? Mm -hmm. And I also told, I shared this with Gary and shared with a lot of different people because so many of us are eager to be successful. Yeah. So many of us want to get to that next phase in life. Here's the problem. You've got to enjoy the season you're in. Yeah, enjoy the journey. That, that's everything. You've got that's to. Everything. And that is hard to do. I think you would agree. It's hard to enjoy the moment yeah. that you're in. There's a the thing about celebrating. You know, like it's actually good to celebrate your accomplishments. Otherwise, you're, it's, it's that driving factor every time you celebrate because you're looking forward to that celebration. And if you don't celebrate each and every little accomplishment, you're not as driven down the road. That, that's yeah. right. But I, I found that goal orientation very fascinating because I, at each point in my life, I had ex like gone through each and one of those phases mm -hmm. up until now to where at first I was literally just, I was always thinking, mm -hmm. thinking in the shower or whatever, thinking driving. And, and then it turns into a post-it notes, writing post-it notes every morning at the gym, mm -hmm. uh, uh, as far as to do's, whatever my goals are, short term, long term, this week, next week, next month. And then it turned and I'm an Excel sheet user. Uh, Gary loves Excel. Yes. Every morning when Daniel <laughs> comes in, I close my Excel sheet because I have written down basically everything I want done that day, that week mm -hmm. and continuing my long term goals. Um, and then after I find myself accountability wise, I have to force myself. This is, I guess the hardest part I have to force myself to talk to people about it because I'm very, I keep to myself a lot. Mm -hmm. And so I think that getting out and talking to people and about real estate and stuff like that, I think that holds me accountable and that is why I've gone to this position because Brian, for instance, at the gym, mm -hmm. Brian, you're probably never going to watch this, but um, yeah, he, he's a big reason because he was keeping me accountable to a certain degree that sure, man, you know, I, I really need to continue. I need, I need to continue buying properties. You know, in order because I've been telling this guy that I'm going to do it, I have to do it at some point. You know, I have to find a way. So yeah, I have to find a way. It doesn't matter what. I've been saying do it. Now I really have to do it. I told someone. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to do this. Yeah, agree. So yeah, so goals, goals. Yeah, let's get goals. A little bit less, you know, informational and. Sorry. Yeah, we'll get to it. Goals. Okay, you graduated with your master's. Yeah. What where what field do you think you want to go to? What are you working on right now to continue your learning? So I think, um, you know, I've always been intrigued with real estate. I talked, I, you know, quickly talked about just like mm -hmm. the life, the game of life and Monopoly. I think that's so important. And it is. Uh, when's the last time you played Monopoly? Long time ago. And, and, and honestly, if anyone's finished the actual, the game, please put it in the comments below because <laughs> I have not met one person who's ever actually finished that game. But it's been a long time. But yeah. I like the general idea, right? Oh, me too. And I find myself playing it now. I played it uh, like last week uh, with Sammy. Right. Yeah, yeah. Did you finish it? No, I gave up. I gave up. Yeah, she yeah. won, and I, I lost because I was find myself wanting to buy everything because you know I just and like real estate, you just want to, the more properties you have, right. the better off you are, kind of thing, right. you know. Um, and then that inherently is why I went kind of bankrupt mm -hmm. in that game, and then she got leverage on me and mm -hmm. ended up losing. But um, yeah, that made me think about, by the way, when we're talking about the season, enjoy the season that mm -hmm. you're in yeah. and not try to bite off more than you can mm -hmm. handle 
because you'll go bankrupt, right? Yeah, no, I think that's very true. Honestly. Yeah, and, and, and I've always likened this to, I call it the, the it's the law of the harvest. Mm. And I hear this 50 times a day. Everybody. It's so important. <laughs> the law of the harvest is so critical to everyone's success out there because the seeds that you plant today <clears throat> ultimately determine the fruit that will come forth from that. Mm -hmm. Here's the key. Yeah. Here's why you have to be patient. And you know this, Gary, is because just because you plant a seed, the problem is in our popcorn generation, we want fruit tomorrow. We want the results mm -hmm. tomorrow. That's yeah. not how it works. Yep. You know, especially working in a, a health and fitness facility um, where people come in, they have their goals and what they want to do. Isn't it crazy how this parallels so I well? I know, the gym and everything. Yeah. yeah it, it really, great. it really is. Yeah. And people have goals. They come in, which is great. Mm -hmm. They got to go. But guess what? They came in. That's great. It's half the battle showing up. But now... People want a six pack the next day. People mm -hmm. want to booty the next day. Yeah, it doesn't right. work that way. You've got to put the effort, the energy, the enthusiasm in to get those results. And those are the type of seeds you're planting. Mm -hmm. And you keep watering, you keep cultivating before you know it, three years down the road, you finally get your masters, right? A couple years down the road, you finally get your first property. Mm -hmm. And you have to make sure that you're focused in that regard, but you have to enjoy the process while you're at it. You got to let the law of the harvest, you got to honor that. Yeah. Because if you don't, you go bankrupt. Because you simply just bite off two more, more, more than you can chew. Um, you, you honestly, uh, you, you, you get burned out, you, know, you burn the candle at both ends, you got too many irons in the fire, and you burn the fire out. You wanna make sure you keep that fire kindled. And that's why I'm gonna talk about goals and we'll, we'll continue on that. But when you have a goal in front of you, you write that down, it keeps that fire burning yeah. and it keeps you accountable and you see it every single day. Whether you put it on your refrigerator, or you put it in the mirror in the bathroom, it says, this is what I'm gonna do, this is what I'm gonna do, this is what I'm gonna do. And next thing you know, you're getting into the space of life where you wanna do. I think it's so cool to kind of, both of us, if we looked at just the last couple of years of our life, the things that we were both able to accomplish, whether it's that is crazy when we first met each other. Yeah, yeah you know, crazy. a bunch of nerds, goobers, just trying to figure out life. Oh you know? yeah, seriously. And, and now it's like you know we're you know we're we're doing some really <clears throat> cool things, and um, you know, hopefully you start getting to the space where you have exponential growth mm -hmm. based off these great decisions that you're making. And yeah. that focus, I think, is important. So for sure. So what do we want to talk about in goals? What do you think? Where do you want to go? Your goals. Oh, my goals. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, your goals, right? Now, I guess what's your short-term goal? What's your long-term goal? Yeah. Whatever time frames are attached to each of those, what are your benchmarks for hitting those goals? Sure. <laughs> Tell me about it. Sure, sure. So we talked a little about the gym just a couple minutes, seconds ago, and we talked about people come in. Those are physical goals, right? People come in, they, they want to have, you know, I'm going to lose weight. I want to yeah. look good. Those are physical goals. I had one of those this year. I, I lost I lost uh, some weight. It's put some muscle on. I was happy about that. That's number one. Congrats. Gary says that with so much sadness. <laughs> <laughs> this is Carmine's is down the street. We love Carmine's, by the way. Feel free to give us a, a, a nice pie next time we have this and we'll have some, you know, uh, pizza and coke. Yes, one bite. Everyone knows the rules. Um, anyways, um, that, was a, that was a physical goal. And then you have, uh, for me, like a spiritual goal. And the spiritual goal for me, though, is, you know, hey, what is, what is the, you know, you talk about mind body and soul, mm -hmm. right? What's the soul aspect of it? What does that look like? And I think that is how you communicate to people, how you talk to people. Are you more uh, empathetic? Are you more kind? Are you gentle? Um, again, empathetic. I think that's important. If that empathy is empathy just understanding. Is yeah, it's understanding other people's worldviews, understanding their perspective. And when you start working on that, I think that's super important. I, I remember this one time I had an opportunity, I was going out of the country and had a team I was working on and mm -hmm. I'm just a type A personality and go, 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 go. And next thing you know, one of the teammates ran off and they were upset. And I said, hey, what's going on? What happened? The person was hysterical, upset, freaking out. And you know, they were responded, well, you yelled at me, you yelled at me. And in my mind I'm going, I definitely did not yell at you. <laughs> you wouldn't see nothing if I thought that was yell. Anyways, the point is, I was like, in my head, I'm like, are you, are you serious? Yeah. But I checked myself. Here's that little part where I say, Daniel, no matter how nice you think you are, you can always be nicer. No matter how kind you think you are, you can always be kinder. My mom has always told me something so good. 
Thanks, Mom. Um, it is the moment you think you got it figured out. The moment you think you got it is the moment you start to fail. And so instead of me going, yes, yes. I didn't yell at you. No, I just said, hey, I can get better. I can be kinder. And I said, hey, I apologize. You know, yeah. I thought that was important. So you have that mind, body, soul, you, you know, make your mind right. Get better. Leaders are learners. Read a book. You know, I have a book right here that we'll, I might talk about here in a second. A good one's a good book that uh, I've read. It's awesome. You know, um, help yourself be in a position of learning. So um, this year, I've been able to accomplish a couple of things. I've, I've read a couple books. Um, I graduated uh, uh, from UF with my master's, and um, uh, I, I got stronger, got better in terms of my physical attainment. Um, but now we're rounding third base. Mm -hmm. We're getting to the end of 2020. It's not, the year's not up yet. So what am I doing now? Um, I'm kind of following after your footsteps here. I've been asking you this question a million times and he still hasn't gotten to it. All right, go. <laughs> I'm keeping everyone on the ledge. Um, I'm kind of following after your footsteps and I'm, I'm, right now I'm working on a real estate license. And that's my goal uh, by the end of this year. It's my short-term goal. Okay. Long-term goal is to use that to leverage it, whether it's through um, real estate investment, um, you know, I, I want to be able to potentially um, have, a, have a mentor, I would consider a mentor, Dr. Stephen Tufts, who has been someone who used his, that is crazy, the guy was a chemist, totally leaves that field. Yeah. Next thing you know, he becomes a broker, becomes, works in merger and acquisitions, works in the insurance field a little bit, works in real estate, um, buys up a um, different companies that are failing. Mm -hmm. You know, he said, Daniel, here's what you want to look for. Someone has low energy, um, has uh, uh, maybe low education, um, you know, so many different opportunities to leverage yourself that you have. Maybe you can obtain some of those assets, turn that business around and get a profit out of it. Okay. So maybe, you know, acquiring some um, businesses that seem like they could work in some regard, some fashion and, you know, start just kind of going from there. I think having the entrepreneurial spirit, I think is really what it's all about for me and taking some chances, okay. um, getting out of my comfort zone. And um, you, you want to be your own boss, Tyson? Of course. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I you think so. Incorporate. You want to get into some type of business. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I think I think working for yourself is 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 really great. Some people want to make sure that hey, I'm a cog in the wheel. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel good, I feel comfortable. It's just not my personality. Yeah. I love what I do. You know, again, it's a, it's a um, uh, engaging with so many people, but I want to be able to make sure that I secure my family's future, you know, my children. Um, and I don't have kids now, but in the future that I can secure their, their future by making sure I'm leveraging now what I'm doing, the seeds I'm playing now to be successful. Yeah, so yeah. being your own boss, you know, I think it feels great when you work for yourself and you know, you, you put these projects online and you say like, Hey, this is what I have to do. It feels great because it's your property. It's, it's what you've done. It's what you've acquired. It's what you fix. It's what you've made better. When you go somewhere and you make it better than it was, mm -hmm. when you left it. It's an awesome feeling. Yeah. So if you can do that for yourself, I think that's definitely a special place, and I'm definitely looking to trying to get to there. But again, I gotta be patient. Working on the real estate license okay. right now. Step one, and that's step one. That's for the end of the year. Okay. And but I, you mentioned uh, acquisitions. Okay. Yeah. So that, yeah. So that really interests you. Yeah. And you think that's maybe where your real passion is going to thrive? Potentially, potentially. <clears throat> and you know, working in um, the graduate uh, on my graduate degree in, in the business field at uh, Warrington, at Florida. You know, understanding what you know, the, the, really the fundamentals of accounting, of um, income statements, of P&Ls, and looking at those and really being able to dissect what's there um, can help you be successful, I think. Can you, can you flash that book really quick over there? Daniel gave me a book, and uh, you know, I'm trying to follow in his footsteps. I got to constantly improve it in myself. So he gave me this book. This is important, y'all. Accounting made simple. You can read this book, and I promise you, an hour and a half. This is everything you know. People like accounting. I don't want to do accounting. It's a business principles that help you be successful, and it, it's hilarious. I don't know how far Gary's got into this, but um, this is everything in life. It really is, especially for your own personal wealth, your own personal um, uh, opportunity to continue to succeed and excel in life. You got to know how money works. And you got to know where money goes. You got to know what your assets are, your liabilities, your expenses, yeah. etc. You need to know what these things are. So I, I like talking to you because obviously I know things from a real estate investing side, but then there's a whole different side of the business side of it and how real money works essentially. Like I can 
do real estate, whatever. I understand all of it, you know, analyzing properties, yada, 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 internal rate returns. But then there's a whole different side and lingo to actual businesses. Right. And uh, I think you're really going to like that side whenever you do. I think so too. Yeah. I, it, that, maybe that's a, that's for another time to discuss, but for sure, because there's, there's so many <coughs> great things. There's so many great things uh, to talk about that and unravel. And especially when you understand, again, like a sales process, mm -hmm. very fundamental. Yeah. So many people are afraid of things that they're, that may be foreign to them, but that book, Guys, I think you can probably buy it for eleven ninety nine on Amazon, maybe cheaper than that. It's worth the investment because it helps you understand what you're looking for. I told Gary, Gary loves Excel. He loves the spreadsheets. He loves doing everything with his properties and managing them through Excel. And you understand the time and rate value of money. You understand the IRR, internal rate of return of money. You understand these concepts. But there's a whole other layer when you actually put these simple accounting principles in space. You go, ah. Yeah, that makes sense. Everything's relatable. It's it's funny yeah. when Daniel starts talking about business and stuff like that, and I'm like, oh, okay, so that, I know how it works in the real estate side, but it's a whole different side. You know, it's, I just find that for sure. And and they and they do ultimately do parallel, and you know, in in a way where and I think about plumbing and telecom, and uh, they're like those are two totally different things. Well, guess what? They both have conduit. Mm -hmm. They both have areas of A point sure. A to point B. Yeah, yeah. right. The installation process and the principle and the form and function of the two things. Yeah. The only difference is one's moving electricity, fiber optics, voice, data, and one's moving water, yeah, sewage, etc. It's like plumbing, telecom, huh? What? Yeah. Different concepts, same thing. Real estate, mm -hmm. business, anything entrepreneurial, acquisition of new opportunities. Different concepts, yeah. but ultimately fall down the same fundamental premise. So understanding these things and these concepts overall, I think are pretty good. No. So Sorry, guys, we had to take a potty break there, uh, but we're back. <laughs> <laughs> we're uh, also debating on if we should do uh, part one and part two, or just go through and end this one. But I, I think we're just going to go with it. We're going to roll with it. All right, cool. So yeah, okay. More into your goals, Daniel. Uh, okay, you mentioned being a realtor. That's what you want to do. That's step one for you. Businesses, okay. Um, you want you want to follow the footsteps of your professor, correct? I think he's uh, well. Let me back up the truck here. Uh -huh. um, here, here's how this whole thing started for me, right? In being entrepreneurial and wanting to move into a different space in life. <sighs> Let's see where do I start. Okay, my dad has been with UPS for 44 years. Yeah, grinding away, working 60 hours a week. That's crazy. I'm 32. The man has worked in the same place for 44 years. That's wild to me. It is. Yeah. My mom has been uh, climbed a ladder of success, and um, you know, regional director of sales, and done so many great things with a lot of different um, organizations, um, especially for a woman, extremely powerful woman in terms of what she's able to do. Um, always living a life of integrity, always doing the right thing, ultimately makes you sleep good at night. Yeah. And again, I think your um, reputation is worth more than silver and gold. And because of her reputation, mm -hmm. I was able to get my, my foot in the door at a young age of um, 20, 21 years old. Yeah. That's important though, because my lovely wife, Bailey, um, you know, will be moving to four years here shortly on being married together, but her mom and dad own a local company here in mm -hmm. Jacksonville. And it's funny because we love to go bike riding. We love to do a whole bunch of things outdoors. My father-in-law, Eric, is wonderful. He loves being adventurous. And one of these times, he was out bike riding by himself. And he's, I don't know if he's like popping a wheelie and just, you know, hanging out. And our, he actually hit a ramp and launched a little too far. Mm -hmm. And he dislocated his AC joint. We get a phone call. And he's like, yeah, I crashed. And that's like the worst thing. You're like, what? You crashed? What happened? Yeah. He's like, no, I'm fine. I'm on the bike, um, pedaling. And I think I dislocated my shoulder. Next thing you know, we go to the emergency room, send you x-rays and make sure he's okay because it was late in the evening. And the nurse is asking his name, his mm -hmm. birthday, and goes, name of employer. And he goes, self-employed. Okay. For me, that is crazy. Because my father-in-law runs a successful business in Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. When you hear people say I'm self-employed, 
typically the first thing that comes to my mind is, I don't have a job, but I'm trying to find one, trying to be cool. I'm an entrepreneur, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. right? And that's okay. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not dissing that. That's, yeah. that's great. I love, I love the energy, but it was weird for him to go self-employed and the guy is super successful mm -hmm. in what he does. That's the moment for me, Gary, that I go, I want to go and position myself with everything that I know, all the skills over time, and now utilize them in some type of form or fashion to yeah. help me be successful and work for myself and ultimately be your own boss, right? Yeah. I think that's really what kickstarted everything for me. That's when um, this, the school thing was just really a cherry on top. Learned some really unique things. I was around some really unique people working in some really unique fashion, um, form and fashion in terms of what you know was brought to the table of all the different um, characters, individuals, and again, meeting my professor was another a part of this whole equation. Mm -hmm. And someone from Jacksonville, literally, you know, I just talked to him on a Zoom call the other day, and he, he told me like, hey, when you're, these are some organizations, some companies, some brokers that you want to align yourself with. Use these um, type of resources to look for businesses that are, um, they're, they're trying to sell. You want to look for these types of things within the business, these low hanging fruit that you can say, hey, I can take this and really take it, shake it up, and increase the overall revenue. He goes, Daniel, my first company I bought, and this is a conversation with him at the time, but he bought for $4 million, mm -hmm. okay? It was um, uh, a, a food processing company, it's actually an egg manufacturing company, that's called Allmark, they're in Gainesville, Georgia. And he goes, we bought it from um, a family, uh, it was failing, um, and just last year we made $114 million. So, whoa. That's insane. That is. That's crazy. Insane. But that's not it. There's more. <laughs> but, uh, but wait, there's more. And what he has done is leverage his skills and his abilities in different types of verticals, different places in the market, mm -hmm. whether it's acquisition of new companies and ventures or whether it's in real estate. Mm -hmm. He also now owns, I don't know how many different offices all along the East Coast and has so many different realtors working for him. Um, one of his offices here in Jacksonville, one individual uh, that's working there just this year, we're 11 months in the year, folks, has already sold uh, close to $10.7 million in real estate, which brings home roughly around $350,000 gross, if I get my math right, and so they're taking home a quarter million dollars. This person, by the way, is younger than both you and I. Yeah. Um, but... It's because you're getting, now, that, now here's the thing, uh, I will say that my professor knows this individual and he was able to help this person be successful through, you know, again, there's a ceiling, I think, for everyone, mom and dad, Yeah. for me, my dad's working 60 hours a week, mm -hmm. 44 years, Daniel, don't do what I'm doing, don't work like I'm working, work smarter, not harder. Then we've talked about moving moving the floor, moving the ceiling for, our, for your children and yeah. my future and my family is now you want to be able to provide better than maybe your family did for you or mm -hmm. the position that you were in in life currently right now. So I, th I think I do, to be honest with you. I do want to raise my kids the same way my parents raised me. Yeah, I get that too. Yeah. I, I mean, that's why I am the way I am. Exactly. exactly. I know. It's like, how do you do that? <clears throat> How do you leverage that? How do you walk that fine line? It's really difficult, you know? Yeah. That's a, just have to find out, I guess, I figure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah there, there's a quote I was calling out. Brian from the gym. Uh, what is it? Brian, um, you better watch this. I know, you better. He's not going to. Um, what is it? Um, I didn't come from money, but my kids sure will. Yeah. Yeah. yeah trademark that, please. Um, <laughs> I was going to do a vain voice, but I won't do that. That's funny. <laughs> I was full, <formed>, didn't it? <laughs> Anyways. Uh, yeah, I think, I think that's, that's it. And I, I, agree, I do agree with that. You know, um, having that, uh, being objective to where you came from, remember where you came from, super important. Yeah. But that my professor, that mentor that I have, has been kind of critical and kind of guiding me in the kind of things I want to do. You know, the last time we had this conversation, he goes, hey, I want you to follow up with him when you're done giving the real estate license. And I want you to give, call this person at this place at this time. Tell them who you are, and I want you to tell them these three things. Tell them that I'm not your ordinary person. I have an incredible network and a large sphere of influence. Mm -hmm. I know this person, my mentor, and I went to UF. <laughs> and he goes, because he's not going to let you in the gate at first. Yeah. 
that, and then, you know, that again, that's the whole sales thing, how to get past the door, the gatekeeper. And that's a whole nother conversation. But he said, he's not going to let you get past the gate first unless you say these three things. Okay. Those are the magic words. Then he's going to say, come to my office and we'll talk shop. So, so, you know, networking, but you know, will really propel you in yeah. your life basically. And what was I going to say? By your thinking, that sphere of influence is a super yeah. important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, so you have a very good path, and, and you would consider him your mentor? You know, I, mentors are great, I yeah, assume. I, I think, I think I'm, be, I'm getting to that space where I can <clears throat> consider him that. And okay. um, just because his willingness to help and to contribute to my life and be impressionable, mm -hmm. just like my mother and father-in-law have been, just like my mom and dad have been, but this is the first person I think outside of my nuclear family that has been willing to take a chance um, with me. And I think with everyone listening, I think it's important to make sure that you have enough um, ability to care about other people, to try to invest in them in some type of way, because there are a lot of people that are hungry. Yeah. And a lot of times in life, it is who you know, not what you know. And he's been someone who literally, I shared this list with Gary. I had a whole entire page full of numbers and contacts and different benchmarks and things to do and resources to tap into. And it's just like out of nowhere, that information is so invaluable, mm -hmm. you know? And he goes, hey, once you do that, follow up with me. We'll go to the next step. Yeah. It's like, whoa. I mean, it's amazing to be able to have that resource. You know, a red carpet just rolled out for you and it's just you. I guess taking action okay. on that. Kind of halfway rolled out. It's not rolled out all the way. Okay. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's rolling. Yeah. Out, right? Yeah. Right? It's yeah. really making me think, though. Yeah. It's encouraging, yeah. too. Because, you know, we have, we have so many opportunities all right now. You know, I do. And that's just because of, again, um, sowing certain types of seeds, being around certain types of people, having a type of mindset, uh, thinking a certain way. I've always said the way you think determines the way you feel. The way you feel determines the way you act. The mindset of being, hey, positive. Hey. Go get her. Hey, go do this. I think that's helped me. But now it's time to get into a position to really leverage yourself to capture that opportunity. You know, you mentioned that earlier. Like everyone has an opportunity in different space in life. Yeah, and it's true. Some people get them in their early twenties. Some people get them in their late forties. Yeah, and I always have to remind it's myself. Yeah, you can sit That's absolutely true. Yeah, that's absolutely true. So <laughs> I have to continue to remind myself. I'm like, hey, man, you're 32. Yeah. Stay on the path you're on. Continue to do the right thing, and you won't regret it. Okay. Yeah. So that's the whole goal. And, um, thanks to, uh, you know, my professor is a wonderful person and I'm, I'm eager to uh, have that follow up conversation with them and maybe you'll invite me back on and we can talk about it a little bit more. Yeah. So right now you're just, you have all this information, you've reached a point in your life where you're done with education, so to speak, and you're just ready to put it that's it. to action. Basically. That's it. Okay. And here's the interesting thing. I will actually say this. I have some things lined up prior to coronavirus and this, this pandemic that we're in right now. Unfortunately, that's unfortunate. <laughs> and I have to, again, back to like, how can you Corona proof yourself? Yeah. I had no intention of doing what I'm doing right now, mm -hmm. but because of everything where we are right now, I had to pivot. Everything happens for a reason. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I had to move and I had to shift and I had to zig and I had to zag. Yeah. yeah. And that's a part of life. And that's really what makes life beautiful. It's that pressure. It's all these different things. And I think, by the way, by setting goals is so important because you have long-term, you asked me, what are your short-term goals or your long-term goals? I told you what my short-term goals. When you have long-term goals, that helps you overcome short-term setbacks. Yeah. yeah. Um, the pandemic is one of them. You know, I had three opportunities I was really eager, licking my chops at diving into. Yeah. Next thing you know, everything shut down. Next thing you know, I'm at home. Next thing you know, people are wearing masks. Next thing you know, business shutting down. Next thing you know, communication, the people that the partners that I was dealing with, they're non existent now. Yeah. You know? So now it's time to really continue to be hungry, continue to be someone who's motivated and go, all right, where can I go to next? And, um, you know, following that real estate space is really unique and having that uh, a mentor kind of help and guide. And you know, the great thing is he goes, hey, when you find some good opportunities, by the way, I'm using these resources, using these um, organizations, these companies, some of these people that I've worked with in the past, you find a good one, call me back. I'll look at it with you. We'll dissect it. We'll look at their financials. <laughs> we'll look at some of the things that maybe, you know, maybe is it just like a, is it a blue collar person running it and they just don't have enough skill sets. They don't have enough of the opportunity. They don't have enough of the, of the wherewithal to help move into that next space. Like if built yeah. a business, can they go to that next level? Because I will help you with that. And do you yeah. think you're ready for that? Oh, I'm, I think I am. I yeah. think I am. I'm, I'm willing to, I'm willing to, uh, 
take the risk in those in those spaces. And I, and I think it's fun to be able to do that and take the risk, you know? So what do you um, think your next step is for that uh, acquisitions of a business? You know, what, what is I gotta the next find step? One. I got to find one. So find one. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, just like you can relate this to real estate. Yeah. You have to find a property, but yeah. you have to analyze a million properties before you find the one that actually fits your criteria of what you're looking for right. as your ideal property, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Your ideal business. What is that, you know? Mm -hmm. So, okay. So you have to find one. So really you have to go on. He gave you sites. Yeah, he gave me a lot of websites. I wish I brought that with me. Um, I don't think I have it. Actually, yes, I do. Uh, uh, IBBA, uh, bizbysell.com. <clears throat> I took a picture of all these notes that Daniel was referring to. Oh, here, I am that's a good that's look, look, right there. look at that. Oh, oh look, look at that. that. Oh, that oh, that's from your course. Yeah. Real estate math. Oh, then a copy from my other book over there, too. Yeah, thanks, Linda. Shout out. Yeah, thanks, Linda. Um, yeah, bizbysell.com, waldenbus.com, ibba.com, bbf.com. Looking for undermanaged, um, low energy, low so you can drive, find low education. businesses on here for sale. Sure, everybody. Yeah, um, it's a good resource. I'm so open to sharing these resources yeah. again. It, it goes against like every grain of my being. If I were not to be sharing this, what was what was yeah. that? Two types of people. You had thinkers, oh, thinkers right? Yeah. You had writers and you had sharers. Yeah. Share, yes. share, 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 share information. It helps people stay accountable and gets people hungry and helps people have opportunity. So if I ever get the position of my professors in, I'll be more than happy to talk to people, share with people like he's doing right yeah. now. I'm forever grateful for someone like that. Yeah, of course. So Nice, okay. Yeah, and I feel that's why I'm also doing this podcast, you know, because I don't want to be that person who's just excelling in what I want to do mm -hmm. and let's say real estate investing and being greedy and not feeling too competitive, like, hey, if I share my knowledge, anybody else can just do that and then surpass me, you know? Like, mm -hmm. I feel sharing is great, yeah. and I think me doing this podcast and sharing what I know, I think it's actually gonna just only help me, you know? So, absolutely, I'm all about sharing all the info, definitely. No, absolutely, and I thought that something that's unique, by the way, is like, okay, what does it look like, you know, when you're sifting and sorting through these opportunities, we talked about that yeah. a little bit already, is, um, hey, you know a dream? Mm -hmm. You know, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a vertical that I'm super familiar with. Does it help? Sure, it would help. But whether it's manufacturing, whether it's a landscaping company, um, whether it's just a distribution company, I think it's understanding those business principles that have been ingrained in me and that I've learned and through over the time, the sales principles mm -hmm. and understanding these things really, I don't know, where's the accounting book, right? These, these accounting principles will help you launch you to be successful. And they're very basic, by the way. Yeah. But when you understand these things and you're eager and you're hungry and you want to go and invest into something, I think, uh, you know, I think it's going to be, it's going to be a fun little trip. I'm, I'm excited for the next, this journey. So, yeah. So, okay. You, you analyze all these properties and are you, are you going to start? Have you started? Have you looked on those websites at all? Yeah. Yeah. You know, they, no luck yet. Nothing that meets my okay. criteria, but, um, you know, you're going to have a lot of different types of um, organizations and businesses that are just trying to sell their book of business, you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, so many different types of things. So it's like, hey, um, lawn mowing company and this group of this book of business and, mm -hmm. you know, you have 7-Elevens and this in and out markets and it's finding again, um, just kind of the right ingredients, you yeah. know, it's just, again, it's looking for a home. How many times do you just comb through the MLS or how many times do you, as a, as a regular um, uh, potential home buyer, Look through Zillow and look through realestate.com and all these different types of things. That's what I was going to bring up. Yeah, like, you know, before at work, well, before work, we'll say, uh, I would analyze a property literally like every day, a whole breakdown of a property. I would look through everything that's out there and I would analyze literally a property in depth every morning, you know? Mm -hmm. And then eventually you, you can you learn to just analyze properties on, on the drop of a dime, for basically. Sure. So I, I think maybe that should be your next step is deep diving mm -hmm. and trying to analyze, even if it's not a potential property for you, yeah. just really understanding it so that you become more familiarized Sure. and analyzing is just boom, one, two, three for you. Yeah. And then it becomes, I guess, after that, how, you, you find the property. Okay. I need this property. This fits my criteria. Mm -hmm. How do I get this property? Mm -hmm. I guess that's a funding question there. Mm -hmm. So yeah. are you thinking like private lending? Are you thinking like... Yeah, saving up. Yeah, you know whether it's you know capital. <laughs> that's a good question. Like, how do you raise capital? capital? Yeah, you know how like, do you get that? Um, I'm trying to relate this to to real estate as well because the same concepts apply. Okay, yeah, this property. How do I get the money? Where do I get this money from? Right. I think the same thing for buying a business. So, oh, just starting my GoFundMe right now. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> no, there, there's some different opportunities and what that looks like, you know, uh, saving up and different strategies to help you do that, you know, um, the small business loan or, you know, getting with the lending company and, and really helping you leverage yourself. But being smart with that is the yeah. really crucial. And that, that's the part that a lot of many people, I think, you know, if you were bring some people in here who've dived into that um, entrepreneurial mindset and, mm -hmm. and dived in different types of opportunities, go, man, I really messed up in this. This is what I've done differently. Um, that information's invaluable. Yeah. Um, you know, I've heard so many stories, and you know, they're not necessarily bad stories. These are stories that are that ultimately, I think, launch people into that next space. You are going to have to fail some part in your life. We fail a lot. And the thing is, this: yeah. if you just look at that failure as a space of a learning opportunity. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to be okay. And I tell myself that all the time. Yeah. Last day. If I fail, I fail and I know I'm going to learn from it. Fail forward. Yeah, you know? exactly. So if I did something wrong, then I'm going to realize I did something wrong and I just have to fix it. And then I do it all again. Sure. Same exact thing. Yeah, so absolutely. So, you know, right now I'm in that, that, that space in that zone mm -hmm. of just coming through some opportunities, seeing what that looks like while pursuing my real estate at the same time. Okay. Did so, you ever want to hold off on the business acquisition? portion until you get your real estate license? Yeah, I, I think so unless something really spectacular comes up. But I have some other opportunities that, you know, I potentially look at as well and I'm, that might help. Such as? Well, I might have to develop some property. Um, I talked to my mom about it in, uh, thanks mom. Um, and, uh, well, you know. Arlene, come back to the gym, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we miss you. Um, but, uh, you know, that, that's another opportunity, another venture, you know, to kind of go into and just, again, just opening up that uh, right now as we speak. So, yeah, I don't have enough information to continue talking about it, but just some other little things that are there. And the point is this, I've talked about it. Mm -hmm. Now you got to go do it. Yeah. So don't go do it. Look kind of foolish, right? Like you kind of talked about. So creating that accountability is certainly important. And um, again, setting those expectations, writing those goals down and ultimately, you know, you move in the right direction in life. You know, yeah. what I'm trying to, what you're trying to do, what I'm trying to do. So nice. Yeah, man. So if you had a million dollars right now, what, what would you do? What would I do with a million dollars? A million dollars, by the way, is never, never quite enough. And people are like, what are you talking about? A million dollars? Here's the reason why. You spend one dollar, you're no longer a millionaire, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, let's think about it. Um... Man, if you would have asked me that maybe two years ago, if you told you a totally different answer, I don't know what I do with a million dollars right now. I would, I would have to do, I have to, I have to let it work for me in some way, some form of fashion. I just don't know what aspect, I how you, I would let that work for me. You have two different people. I would assume one, the people who say, "All right, I'm just gonna pay off my house, yeah. pay off my family's houses, and I'm cool. Well, I'll sit mm -hmm. on it, you know." Mm -hmm. And then I think of the other investment side or the entrepreneur side. Okay, how do I make this million dollars turn into ten, ten million dollars? Exactly, you know, or a billion. What the be? That's important. Yeah, no, that's important. And you know, I think you know, man, there's so many things I wish I could talk about. Talking about debt, you know, there's good debt and there's bad debt, and I don't want to get too bad, too deep into that. Is and my brain just going everywhere. Leveraging good debt, man. Yeah, that's it's all about that's real estate investment. Debt, you know, but learning how to spend money is so important. You know, <laughs> learning how to let money work for you is so important. Learning how to have a budget is so important. Again, um, and back to goal setting. If, if you don't know what a budget is. Go find out what one is. Go find out what that is for you. Go see what you're spending on. Yeah. Go see what that money looks like for you. Start learning how to make money work for you. And you'd be surprised. You know, you hear all the time, it's really what your values are. You know, people go, huh, $99.99 a month to go work at a gym. Yeah, I just don't have that in my budget. But we'll go buy a thousand dollar iPhone. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, what are your values? What are yeah. your priorities? So not to get off topic too much, but again, you know, the goal setting part is critical. It's crucial to anyone's success in life and kind of, if they want to have the correct momentum in the right space, you gotta really take these things in consideration and look in the mirror mm -hmm. and see what you really want to do. You know, evaluate your friends and where you're at. So if we were to recap this whole thing, you know, I talked about, about who I am. I love Jacksonville. It's a great city for young people. Yep, for um, entrepreneurial people, people who want to invest in the city, um, people who are hungry, um, people who love beaches and the waters and the sunshine. You guys come with hurricanes and thunderstorms. Um, hot spring. And hot spring yeah. sometimes, but a lot of sometimes <laughs> sun too, you know, a lot of the sun. But, and then I start talking about sales, a little bit about me and my background and why sell, sales is so important. Mm -hmm. You can't have anything if you don't have sales. Um, 
But before you can start selling, you gotta have goals. Yeah. You gotta have personal goals. You gotta have goals for your business, goals for your finance, goals for your health, goals for relationships. Because if you don't have goals, it means you're not growing. And if you don't grow, that's a tragedy, right? Um, so looking at those things in life we talked about, and then when you do have these types of goals, are you just thinking about them? Are you just writing them down? Are you sharing them? The proof's in the pudding. You know, mm-hmm. I didn't want to get too lost in minutia and like be the numbers guy and put that in there. But I think it's really important to share that. You know, it's not me saying this. This is like, this is facts. Yeah. You know, this is really what happens when you take these concepts and you move them in motion into the right direction. Next thing you know, you have a, make sure I get, say my number, right? 76% goal attainment. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, but anyways, what's that look like for you? What's that strategy look like for you? It's different for everyone, but you just got to start moving in the right direction because if you're coasting, you're going downhill. You can't coast. Get out of your comfort zone. Start rocking and rolling. Move in the right direction, right? And uh, ultimately, I think you'll be successful. So there we go, guys. That's it. That wraps up the Daniel Cannon Show. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Glad to have you, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man, definitely. It. All right. Welcome to... The Drunken Bourgeois, episode two. Today's guest, Daniel Kennan, born and raised in Jacksonville, Florida, easily one of the most quick-witted, perceptive, intellectual people that I have came across. And you're going to get a million different nuggets of useful information to use in your everyday life, anything from planning to, su- to business to success, you name it, we go over it all. Enjoy.